Hey there, Mountaineers. Welcome to episode 20 of History Land. I'm your host, Matterhorn Matt, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the history of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. And stay tuned to the end of the video for important information regarding the future of my channel. Let's get started. Walt Disney was often called a futurist, one who would embrace the future, but at the same time, has an appreciation for the nostalgic. People would often say that he had one foot in the future and one in the past. So when plans started for an expansion of Main Street, it's not hard to see himself revolutionizing the way Imagineers would create attractions. In the late 50s, concepts for a Chinatown section of Main Street were drawn up with the main attraction being a stage show in an elegant restaurant. Walt was shown drawings by Disney legend Herb Ryman that show a restaurant interior with many colorful birds in cages hanging above the guests. Walt initially rejected the concept, claiming, you can't have live birds above the guests, they'd poop on them, only to be told, oh, these aren't real birds, they're mechanical. The idea then shifted to them having them chirp, to chirping to each other, to finally having them all sing. The park had already shown off moving animals in The Jungle Cruise and Nature's Wonderland, but these were simple figures with repetitive motions. But this would be something new, something so new that Wed would have to come up with a new name for it. Ooh, uh, 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 audio animatronics? Right, audio animatronics. When the Tiki Room opened in June of 1963, it was the world's first show to feature the all-new audio animatronics. The attraction itself was actually, at first, separated from Disneyland in the fact that Walt Disney personally owned it himself through his company, Wet Enterprises, instead of the rest of Disneyland, which was, and still is, owned by the Walt Disney Company. This 17-minute show features over 225 moving birds, drumming tiki figures, chanting tiki masks, and singing orchids, and birds of paradise blossoms inside a tropical hut where fountains rose and fell, a rainstorm raged outside, and an elaborate bird mobile descended from the ceiling. The attraction had an all-star lineup of Disney legends, with the main song being written by the Sherman Brothers. Wally Bogue from the Golden Horseshoe writing the script, Raleigh Crump and Mark Davis designing the outline of the project, and John Hench illustrated the artwork. It also featured the voice talent of Wally Bogue and Fulton Burley as Jose and Michael, two of the show's hosts, as well as Thurl Ravenscroft as Fritz, and the rest of the Mellow Men as the singing voices of the birds. Because this was such a groundbreaking attraction, it didn't cost a ticket. Instead, it cost 75 cents special ticket and stayed that way for a few years. In 1964, United Airlines started sponsoring the attraction and continued to do so until 1973 when Dole took over and is still sponsoring to this day. The show is housed in the first building upon entering Adventureland and actually shares part of its building with the Plaza Pavilion and the Tahitian Terrace. As a holdover from its restaurant days, it is the only attraction to have a bathroom. While waiting outside in the Lani area for the show to start, visitors are serenaded by songs from the album Steel Guitar Magic Hawaiian Style. Hawaiian gods are represented as well around the perimeter of the Lani and each has a story to tell via audio animatronics. In the years to come, the attraction slowly became one of the most popular attractions in Adventureland. And, with its newfound popularity, it began to get replicated at other Disney parks. We'll be right back with more History Land. The show was popular enough that, in 1971, the Magic Kingdom opened with its version of the Tiki Room, but here it would be retitled Tropical Serenade and feature a different pre-show featuring two toucans, who, after introducing themselves, they begin telling a story of how they found the Sunshine Pavilion and Tiki Room when escaping from various animals on the Jungle Cruise. A cast member stops their story to tell them that the show inside is about to start, and guests enter the room for a copy of Disneyland's show. 
This template was used for Tokyo Disneyland's Tiki Room as well. Tokyo would open its version in 1983, with an exterior and pre-show being identical to the one in Florida, and the main show itself was the same as its Anaheim, albeit in Japanese. It was planned at one point for Paris, but Imagineers decided against it, as it wouldn't fit in the theme with Adventureland. Throughout the 70s and 80s, even as technology increased and more elaborate shows like The Country Bears and America Sings started performing, the Tiki Birds still found an audience. By the mid-90s, however, it seemed a little dated and, in 1996, Disneyland's version would receive an update in technology to make everything digital and the birds found a new audience, at least in Disneyland. At the Magic Kingdom and Tokyo, the birds had a different fate. In Florida, the birds had a hard time bringing guests in. Most would either leave after the first song or fall asleep in the dark, air-conditioned theater. So in 1997, Tropical Serenade would close in the Magic Kingdom and be replaced by the Enchanted Tiki Room under new management in 1998. This version of the show added Iago from Aladdin and Zazu from The Lion King as the new owners of the building, with Iago wanting to spice things up with more modern music. During all of the commotion, Iago ends up irritating the Tiki Gods and is banished. Eventually, he returns in a different location, looking charred by his ordeal. Tokyo's version played until 1999, when it was replaced by the new incarnation called The Enchanted Tiki Room, now playing Get the Fever. This version featured the Tiki Room in a Las Vegas nightclub setting, and removed the four host birds from the original show, Jose, Michael, Pierre, and Fritz, replacing them with four lounge host birds, Dano, Scats, Buddy, and Lava, the first female host bird. The story involved the birds trying to wake up the sleeping tiki gods, which was accomplished by Lava singing Fever to get them. Get the Fever closed in January of 2008 and was replaced on July 25th, 2008 with Stitch Presents Aloha I Como Mai, adding Stitch from the Lilo and Stitch franchise to the show. In other new shows, the birds welcome the audience to the tiki room and start off by singing Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride from Lilo and Stitch, which also happens to be one of my favorite Disney songs at the moment. Just as they finish the first verse, however, the lights go out, interrupting the song. When the lights come back on, the birds see that someone has written messages and painted pictures all over the walls and windows of the Tiki Room. It turns out Stitch wants to join the party, but he has a funny way of going about it. They let Stitch perform in the show on one condition, that he not interfere with the show anymore. Stitch agrees and asks the audience if he wants to join his Ohana. Stitch and the Birds of Paradise then close the show with a reprise of Aloha e Como Mai, Stitch declares everyone Ohana, and the show ends with him spitting out of the fountain. Even though this version of the show went along well with guests, Magic Kingdom's version, however, did not. We'll be right back with more History Land. Did you know every episode of History Land is made possible because of viewers like you? Thanks to Patreon, we can continue to make high-quality episodes you love, like this one. As always, you have access to our amazing Discord server and videos on YouTube, but for a bit more, you get access to the Yodeler tier, which gives you sneak peeks of upcoming videos and your name in each History Land video. In the Heralder tier, you get exclusive access to live tapings of History Land and more behind-the-scenes goodies. And for just a bit more, our Bob Sledder tier gives you access to have your voice in an episode of History Land and have creative input on videos. Here's a special thanks to this month's patrons. While Stitch Presents Aloha e Como Mai went down very well in Tokyo, under new management in the Magic Kingdom went on to be arguably one of the most panned enhancements to an existing attraction in Disney Park history. One guest summed it up in three words, they ruined it. Under new management had some supporters though, but perhaps they could all fit in the room at one time. In January of 2011, a small fire broke out in the attic of the Florida show, although minor damage happened to the theater and the sprinkler damaged some of the birds. By August, under new management had been replaced with the original version of the show, now called Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, albeit a shorter version of the show. By the early 2000s, the Disneyland version had seen better days, 
Not having received maintenance in several years, some of the burrs stopped working, sunlight peeked through the holes in the ceiling, and worst off, the front part of the building collapsed. The building started to fall apart, literally, and in 2004, the Tiki Room closed for an extensive refurbishment, and when it opened in 2005, the building was restored to its original glory, and the show was kept intact, albeit a slightly shorter version. Although the technology in the show isn't the most advanced nowadays, the Tiki Room has managed to endure over 50 years with their infectious music, Polynesian flair, and refreshing Dole Whip. And that's the history of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to like the video and share it with your friends. If you got to experience any versions of the Tiki Room in any capacity, let me know in the comments. I love reading them. Big changes to the channel are also coming very soon. There will be no new episode of History Land next week, but please- History Land will be back with a few surprising changes. If you haven't already, check out my Discord where we have fun Disneyland discussions, follow my Twitter, and support me on Patreon. The links to everything will be in the description, and if you haven't already, be sure to check out my weekly podcast with Alex the Historian. Thanks for watching everybody, and as always, have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Thank you.